While past Laren is setting up the catcher test, I will give a little introduction about what Vancron is and why I was surprised by the results that I got in testing it. And then I will explain why I maybe should have anticipated the results despite my expectations. I was able to get some Vancron from Malachi of Troopa Knives. I had done some hardness testing with a very small amount of the steel before, but this was the first time I had enough steel to do edge retention and toughness testing. So I did two different heat treatments to give me about 61.5 Rockwell C and 66.5 RC. The 61.5 RC heat treatment is relatively standard following the data sheet with a 1900 degree austenitize and a 1000 degree temper. The high hardness used a lower austenitize of 1800 degrees in a combination with a low temper of 350. Knife maker Sean Houston of Triple B Handmade ground the bevels on the catcher knives after I heat treated them. Vancron has a very healthy amount of vanadium at 10%, a similar amount to steels like CPM 10V, K390, and Venatus 8. But unlike those steels, Vancron has a combination of carbon and nitrogen, while those steels have only carbon. So those steels form vanadium carbides, but Vancron forms a vanadium carbonitride, a compound with both carbon and nitrogen. Carbonitrides coarsen more slowly than vanadium carbides, which gives Vancron a finer microstructure than Venatus 8 or CPM 10V. And with that high vanadium, I expected Vancron to perform similarly to other vanadium steels, but instead it tested much lower. In fact, if you compensate for hardness, Vancron performs similarly to Vanex, another high nitrogen steel made by Udahome with only 3.5% vanadium in it. So why should I have anticipated this odd result? Well, in Udahome's own data sheet, it shows Vancron as having only average abrasive wear resistance. Udahome ranks it as only slightly better than Venatus 4 Extra and significantly below Venatus 8. Instead, what Udahome rates very highly for Vancron is its adhesive wear resistance. Vancron is designed to resist galling, which is a form of wear when rubbing metal surfaces will micro-weld and tear sections off the surface. For reasons that are still under active research, vanadium carbonitrides are especially good at improving adhesive wear. One proposed mechanism is that the vanadium carbonitrides form oxides that act as lubricating particles, or that protruding carbonitrides are less prone to welding to metal surfaces or that the finer array of carbonitrates are more effective to these somewhat coarser vanadium carbides. Whatever the mechanism, adhesive wear is almost never a mechanism of dulling with knives. I was aware of Udahome's poor rating for abrasive wear resistance, but I thought it would still do well on the catcher test. The reason I thought it would do so well is that many abrasive wear tests use a very coarse abrasive that doesn't translate to edge wear. For example, Crucible has tested D2 as being slightly more wear resistant than S90V in their abrasive wear test because D2 has very large carbides that are helpful with large abrasive particles. But in the catcher test with a more realistic abrasive size, S90V does 60% more cutting than D2 because of the very hard vanadium carbides in S90V. Another reason I thought Vancron would do well is that LC200N and Vanex had done well when compared to their carbon-only counterparts. For example, LC200N has a similar amount of chromium carbonitride as AEBL does chromium carbide, and LC200N actually did a little bit better than AEBL, indicating that the chromium carbonitride may be a little harder than chromium carbide. And Vanex has a similar amount of chromium and vanadium carbonitride as S30V does chromium and vanadium carbides, and Vanex only did a little worse than S30V on the catcher test. The proportions of carbides and carbonitrides are a little different, but LMAX is essentially the same steel as Vanex, but with only carbon, and Vanex and LMAX also did very similarly on the catcher test. So the only conclusion I can come to is that vanadium carbonitrides are significantly softer than vanadium carbides, and this is dramatically reducing the resistance to edge wear. The very high wear resistance of vanadium steels come from the very high hardness of the vanadium carbides, one of the hardest carbides that are found in steel. So if adding a bunch of nitrogen into those carbides drops the hardness, the abrasive wear resistance also goes down significantly. This limits the maximum wear resistance that nitrogen alloyed steels can have unless there is another element that could be used instead of vanadium. I also tested the toughness of Vancron to see if its finer carbonitrides provided a boost to toughness when compared to the somewhat coarser vanadium carbide steels. And the result is, not really. It is a bit tougher than CPM 10V, but it is about equal to Venatus 8. With other steels like D2, decreasing the carbide size leads to a significant improvement in toughness. Maybe once you get below a certain particle size, you don't see further improvements to toughness. Toughness is broken down into two primary steps, crack initiation and crack growth. Crack initiation is controlled mostly by the particle size. Larger particles need less stress to fracture. But crack growth can actually be more rapid if the average distance between particles is shorter. 
Usually with tool steels, the toughness is limited by crack initiation, but maybe we have gotten to a point where a further reduction in carbide size has led to easier crack growth, and therefore we aren't seeing an improvement in toughness. The toughness change with hardness was very flat with Vancron. I don't know if this is an inherent property to Vancron, or if it was because I did a high temper of 1000 degrees for the low hardness, and a low temper of 350 for the high hardness. Tempering at 1000 degrees is the recommendation by Udahome, but I have found for some other steels like CPM Crewwear and CPM 10V that a low temper can lead to superior toughness for a given hardness. So that very well may be what happened here as well. So after all of that, is Vancron a bad steel? No, I was just surprised about the results and the mechanisms at play for why it performed differently than expected. It is in a similar toughness wear resistance balance to many high speed steels and stainless steels. Personally, I would prefer to use a steel like CPM 10V or Venatus 8 as they have similar toughness to Vancron but with significantly more edge wear resistance. But Vancron is easier to grind and finish than those steels due to the finer softer carbonitrites. Oh, and one more point since somebody might ask, uh, Vancron does not have stainless levels of corrosion resistance even though it has high nitrogen. Nitrogen can boost corrosion resistance in a steel with high chromium, but it can't make a steel stainless on its own. Sean noted to me that the steel was rusting during water-cooled grinding if he wasn't careful with keeping it dry afterward. So Vancron is a very interesting steel from a metallurgy standpoint and it does perform well, but there are others I would prefer. Recently, I've done a little more research on why the high nitrogen stainless steels like LC200N and Vanex are limited to about 61 Rockwell C, while other stainless steels can get to 63 plus. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in a video like that. Sometimes I don't know if random esoteric topics like that are interesting to people or if everyone prefers more basic videos. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for paying for this research. In fact, both Malachi and Sean are Patreon supporters, so they are active in the community, and when we all work together, we can learn more about steel and knife performance and the variables that control it. But this was a fun one, and I hope you learned something. Bye! Hi, everybody. Um, you may have saw me or may have not saw me because I have been in one of Laren's videos. It was around December. I don't know, but I want to talk about kids having steel because I know about kids having steel. Kids having steel is, it, is very dangerous. Babies, especially none. Everybody knows that, right? And also, the only time when they should have them, like you should know because you need to teach them how to hold steel and other things because steel is pointy and you need to be careful about that. So make sure you watch your steel. So everybody could know that now because it is very easy. So, no kids should have steel unless they know how to hold it, and their parents have to see. Okay.